Well, welcome, Grace, to our show once again. Glad to have you here. I'm so glad to be back, Lori. Well, congratulations on your newest book, Finding Hope in Crisis. It's beautiful. And I know that you write from such an honest place, uh, Grace, in the middle of this crisis. You said at the very beginning of this book that you thought you'd gone through enough problems in your life, but actually you faced even more challenges. Tell us about what's happened to you maybe while you were writing this book. Oh, even while I was writing the book, Lori, I, something happened actually about two weeks before I started writing. I, I had to help my youngest daughter and her husband move. And during the course of all of that, I broke my tailbone. I was also having oh. problems with a frozen shoulder issue that was you oh, no. know, moving heavy boxes made it a whole lot worse. So when I came back from that move, I had to write most of this book standing because I couldn't sit with the broken tailbone. So oh, I was... I was writing about finding hope in crisis from a place of a crisis myself. And then even yes, last, certainly. Well, yeah, well, a few months after, even between the finishing of the book and its release, uh, my mother, my she was 88 years old, and she took a, a sharp decline down with her health and, and passed away. So there we were in the, all of that, the, the COVID muddle in hospitals and dealing with that with my mom and a sudden decline. So a crisis there too. Well, you know what? There's something to be said for speakers and writers that God takes us through what we're going to write before we can deliver it. Isn't that true? I think that's painfully true. So between some of my writing friends and I, we have all these conversations and we we um, talk about ideas that we have for next books. And it's always like, be careful what your next idea is going to be. I know. Right. Well, I love this book. It's so beautiful, Grace, and it's so practical. And there's 90 devotionals. So I've already earmarked some of them myself because I'm going to need to reread some of these reminders. But, you know, you touch on a lot of subjects and you bring a lot of encouragement. So can you just share, you know, truths that, you know, about worrying about the past it seems to be a big issue for many of us what kind of advice or thoughts do you have from your devotional in regards to that yeah you know we we spend a lot of energy sometimes thinking about the past and wishing that we could change things wishing that we could make them different if only we could redo them uh, but most of the things that we worry about we have no control over especially those things that are already done we can't go back and fix most of them and those are the things where we just have to ask the Lord to help us move move past and teach us the steps that he would want us to take in order to move forward. Um, you know, I, I really wanted this book to be not a heavy read for people whose minds are on overload. I wanted it to provide little nuggets of encouragement. When, when we are so overwhelmed with the stuff of life, whether it be something from the past or something we're dealing with uh, in the present or even worries that we have about the future, again, most of which we can't control. Uh, just, right. just to focus people's minds on the truth, on the simple truth of God's word and his promises. That's what carries us yeah. through. That is what carries us through. And I love what you said. This determines our response to crisis. You said, forgetting about God's presence and empowerment leads to wrong thinking. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so really, whatever we habitually focus on, that takes up real estate space. I'll describe it that way. It takes up real estate space in our brain. So whatever we habitually focus on becomes larger and larger and larger to us. And so if we are going to focus on the what ifs or the things that are really concerning us in the present moment, whatever it is that we're going through, that's going to take up real estate space and it's going to loom larger. But when we shift our focus to the promises of God, to his presence in our lives and to his promises, especially promises to strengthen us, to be our refuge, to never leave us or forsake us or to provide everything we need. When we focus on those promises and on who he is, then that is what starts looming larger. And that is what starts overcoming our fears. So we really have to right. change our thinking from inaccurate thinking to the truth. Well, and that's what this devotional book does, because every day it's like, it's, it's very digestible. Can I just say that? Like, it doesn't overwhelm you because but it focuses, get your mind focused on the right thing, and especially worry. Tell us about God's solution to worry. 
Oh, I just think it's found in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, where he tells us to not be anxious for anything, but in everything to pray and to give thanks. And then what happens? The peace of God that, that surpasses all understanding will guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. And so I like to think of that as a mathematical equation. We have to be intentional about just choosing not to focus on those things that are causing anxiety. So that's the first thing in the equation. And then we add prayer. So we pray about those things that are really troubling us. And then we have to add Thanksgiving. So for so many years, I forgot about that element of it. And all I would do is pray and pray and pray about whatever was bothering me. But you see, that's what loomed larger for me because that's all I was focusing on. And so when I discovered this element of giving thanks, it's very, it's very clearly in that verse, but I had just overlooked it. Um, then that changes everything because we start thanking God for what he's already done and for what he wants to do. And we can start thanking him in, in advance for answering our prayers according to his will. So it's intentionally refusing to focus on what was bothering us, praying about those things, giving thanks, and that those three things added together equal peace. If any one of those three things is missing, we are not going to have that peace of God. I really think that's God's that's, solution yeah. to worry. That's fantastic. That's a great equation. And I appreciate you pointing out how we often f miss out on thankfulness. We get stuck on the item we're actually worried about. So thank you for that reminder. And I've noticed a lot of devotions in this book that address that and help us make the shift. You know, many people are living with a sense of despair right now, Grace, and you've shared your own loss and I'm sorry for your loss. And, and so you can really relate to, but how do you pull out of it? How have you pulled out of it? What's worked for you? Yeah, so several things, very practical things. One is I just stay in the Word, and that's why I wanted to write this resource for people to keep them in the Word, because it's at those times when we're in crisis that we need it the most, but we just feel like we can't focus on a long passage of Scripture. So here's a little resource to help with that. So that's one, stay in the Word. Two is I, I like listening to worship music, and so sometimes when my, my mind too. just can't take a lot more, uh, I will listen to praise and worship music. And often I will do that as I go for a little walk. And so even physical exercise, get those hormones moving again. The fresh air does us good. Uh, and then another one is to talk to a trusted godly friend, share with that person how you're feeling and get that person to pray for you. You know what? I'm I'm tracking with you on all of this. Uh, I take my music on walks. I take I do my prayers on walks. It's such a great way to connect with God. And you know, before we we uh, close here, any final thoughts, especially that maybe stand out from in this book that you'd want to share with our viewers? I think the bottom line is is where we put our thoughts. Where do we place our thoughts? And so I would encourage viewers if they're in a point of crisis right now just choose to not focus on how big this thing is that you're dealing with. Choose instead to focus on who God is, that he is all powerful. He is, he is the refuge. He is, he is light. He will breathe life into you as you go through this thing that just feels like it's consuming you right now. Focus on the beauty of who he is. Amen. I stand with you. Thank you for this great resource. You can find it wherever books are sold and you can go on 700club.ca for more information about Grace. Thank you, Grace. God bless you. And thank you for this great book. Thank you, Laurie.